The early and mid 70s was a turbulent period in the global economy because of the oil crisis where some of the uh, countries who imported oil, including the Nordic countries, uh, were severely hit. So it was quite natural that the Nordic countries started to discuss how to create really long-term investment bank together. And that was really the start of the Nordic Investment Bank. It gave a possibility for the Nordic countries to co-finance, co-fund long-term infrastructure projects in a situation where the global economy was quite turbulent. The bank starts to operate in August 1976. The headquarter is decided to be placed in Helsinki. Prime Minister Palme, I think he was quite pleased actually having Helsinki as the headquarter because he said it will tie Finland more closely to the Nordic community and not take a little step away from Moscow. Det här nordiska samarbetet ser man med allt större intresse på och det är intressant att låna till Norden. At that time the role of NIB was to bring in long-term capital from the international market and on the other hand to also support uh, cross-border activities within the Nordic countries. Responsible growth gains credibility, as well as need for more capital. We were extremely cautious of, of establishing an institution that would, from the very beginning, be credible in the international capital markets. In 1982, the front men of NIB travelled to New York for decisive appointments. I joined them in New York to visit the credit rating agencies Standard & Poor's and Moody's. We were advocating, of course, the best possible rating for NIB. This is really the backbone of the business because this is the reason why NIB can be a positive supplement to other sources of financing. Credibility becomes a scarce asset only a few years later. All over the Nordic region, you had, within a certain period of time, you had deregulation of the financial sector. It turned out that the banking crisis started in 1991. I, of course, I was here at the time and living through this. The demand of, uh, on funds from NIB increased quite strongly in that period because the commercial banks became more reluctant to longer-term financing. Economic turbulence in the West is accompanied by a political collapse in the East. In August 1991, the Baltic countries declare their independence. The Baltic economies were in a very sorrow state. And on top of the poor economic conditions, they were facing serious environmental problems. The region is starving for funding to start rebuilding their economies and societies. And then I be obviously had the closeness to these countries as a good reason for showing them support. This was also good business sense because the business opportunities that eventually would appear when the market began to operate. In 2005, the Baltic countries become members of the NIB. As showing the Nordic Investment Bank was very important because through the bank we joined the society. The Baltic Sea also connects the member countries to a growing environmental concern. A lot of the credits given by the financial sector to industrial projects have caused environmental degradation. 
And it is necessary for the financial sector to help clean up. And then you have to ask yourself, so what could the contribution of an institution like NIP be? We identified two things. Uh, one was to uh, uh, support competitiveness in the areas where you needed long-term capital. And the other thing was to support the environment. With the new strategy, the sustainability evaluation becomes a significant feature of the NIB mandate. First of all, we are a bank. So what we have to do when we are approaching a customer, we want our money back. So you have to look at a project, is it healthy? So that's one thing. Every bank will do that. But then where we are different, then we have a mandate. So either it's a green mandate or it's competitiveness. Then you make the analysis and saying, what effect does this project have on the environment? Accomplishing the mandate of sustainable growth, NIB has supported Iceland's transition from fossil to renewable energy production. What you need is vision. You need a government political vision to move ahead with these projects and then funding that's willing to have the long-term view. I think there's great potential for utilizing more renewable energy uh, around the world. A publicly owned financial institution like NIB has an inbuilt variable that will change with the needs of the society. We want to reach out to a broader range of potential clients, more SMEs, more mid-caps, and we want to make sure that we stay relevant to our large customers. And that might mean, in some cases, actually funding more projects outside the region. The NIV is certainly striving to, to fulfill the mandates given by the owners, and that is to increase competitiveness, to, to increase sustainable growth, to increase the catch-up of the Baltics. These are very important common objectives. But apart from that, I think it's important to remember that the NIB is a bank, and what we do best is banking.